Hello, sir. Welcome you all. So, we session that is heard of the <coughs> non-based development. So, in this lecture, we are going to be seeing a, a different world of modules which are going to be part of the APB verse that we talked about in the last lecture. So, these are all about peripherals, okay. So, there are plenty of peripherals and you know it will not be humanly possible to cover all of them and there are plenty of implementation too from based on which company is uh, giving and what are kind of features they are supporting in those peripherals. So, my intent of this lecture is to give you an overview of the major important categories of peripherals and their high level functionalities. Maybe I would have referred some uh, specific implementation which I am referring to uh, that in the note below, but this feature what I am listing here may not be only restricted to this, it could be uh, more than what I am giving here or it could be a subset of this or there may be some changes to those uh, features which are there uh, in a particular category of peripherals. So, what I am going to be sharing in this lecture is only a an overview and then a likelihood of what are the features could be supported in those peripherals. So, it is not limited to that what I am listing here and uh, you may have to refer to a particular implementation of a peripheral to know what all the features are supported and how to program them because each peripheral the each implementation may differ in terms of how to program them. So, I am not going into details of which registers and which pins need to be which bits in the registers need to be configured because that is not uh, universal and it is not specific to uh, you know it is not accepted standard. Maybe there are some uh, conditions, but uh, mostly mostly it is implementation dependent. So, you may have to look at the documentation of particular implementation to configure a particular peripheral. So, here let us see what all the peripherals are there and how you know we will give you some overview of each of them. So, that when you go and read some manual of particular implementation you will be able to appreciate what is uh, supported there. So, the rest of the lectures are going to be uh, two lectures on peripherals and some interconnect protocols and then we will conclude it with the few uh, details on the feature family of the, the latest advanced ARM family of the ok. So, in this lecture we are going to cover this following thing. I am sure all of you would have heard about it or used it in uh, somewhere the other the direct memory access DMA. So, let me just give you an overview before we go into the details. Uh, so, maybe I am uh, sorry about this particular ok. Let us see I have a, a picture and uh, you know which will give you some more details then I can you know explain more details about uh, DMA where it exactly it is used ok. So, let us go into the slides. So, DMA is used in order to provide high speed data transfer ok. So, as the name suggests it is directly accessed ok from the memory. So, you know so far we have been saying that if you need to access a memory the processor in the system needs to give the address out ok and then the memory will give a data back ok. This is what we have been told or we have been discussing ok. This is the address who has to give the address it is the processor ok and then the memory as a slave device this is behaving like a master the processor and then drives the memory cycles either LDM or LDR or you know, HDM or HDR in section. So, memory gives out the data or maybe we can write into the memory, but this is not the case always because if you want to involve the processor for every transaction in the memory then it is going to slow down the whole system because processor has some other important things to do other than copying or taking from memory. So, to speed up this the concept of DMA came that is called direct memory access. The memory is accessed directly not through the processor ok. Now, you may wonder who wants to access it. It could be 
that you this is a ASB bus let us assume that this is AHB ok now I can say what bus I am using because you are all familiar to with the Ambo architecture now. So, APB bridge is here and then the APB bus is there on this side and then assume that there is a controller I will call this as a disk controller. So, sometime maybe disk controller could be on AHB, but let me assume that the disk is access through this for a moment ok or it could be a serial port also yeah, we can have a serial port and then you know you are you are, you are a serial port controller and then the serial port is connected. But if there is a need for a transfer of bulk of data into memory ok from some peripherals. It could be a disk controller or it could be a user you are maybe we know it is a PC connected to this. So, suppose programmer wants a some buffer of data maybe a few bytes it could be few bytes or it could be on page of uh, you know memory data or code maybe needs to be copied into the main memory I am calling this as a main memory. Now, one one way of doing is on initiate the transfer ok copying from APB to some register here and then from register to memory. So, you can see that if you need to copy a character coming from a peripheral and to be written into memory the peripheral is a slave device. So, it needs to be accessed by someone. So, it could be the processor. So, ARM can access the peripheral register because it is all mapped to a memory, but you cannot do a memory to memory transfer. Memory to memory transfer, if you have noticed, no instruction in the ARM supports this. Well, that is not the kind of a risk instruction, ok. Risk instructions always have a processor register to memory or memory to processor register, but there is no memory to memory to transfer that is that instruction itself is not supported in any disk family maybe few of them will have that a unique company you know uh, so it, there will be always a um, exception for these kind of rules, but in general a risk family of processor and in particular in ARM we have the LDM and STM instructions which, which are the only load store instruction with the memory that also it transfers to and fro from memory to register. But our intent is to get some few data, blocks of data or a page of data into memory. So, that is from peripheral to memory. So, that cannot be done directly from peripheral to memory unless we introduce a new uh, block in the discussion, ok. That is called DMA. So, what the DMA does? The processor accesses this as a another module in the bus it could be another coprocessor or it could be implemented in any way you want, but this register star it could be accessed as a peripheral also ok. And that means, you know it is a uh, it is part of the memory and uh, map these registers are mapped to a particular part of the memory. So, we could write into this some details. So, that DMA takes care of transferring from maybe you uh, are uh, here to a memory. So, to do this somebody has to initiate it because this is not a it will behave like a monster, but somebody has to initiate it, it cannot do it on its own. So, that is done by a processor like R or it could be done by another processor if it is a DSP processor it is also a master there you know that a bus can have multiple masters. So, if DSP wants to transfer some data from maybe a, a speaker or some device or a, you know video card and then it wants to pro put the data into the memory before the DSP can process the data. So, even the DSP processor can initiate it, but one of the other processors who can be programmed can initiate a transfer what they do they program the DNA with some information. So, what are the information that they need to give for a transfer uh, of a data. Say okay, let me choose some other color seen by pretty clearly. 
So the intent is okay. Let me take Okay, this is the maybe a peripheral. Okay, some memory, some peripheral. Okay, and this is the memory. M. Now start from here. Maybe you no, know, you want to say that I want some data from this register. Maybe okay, because it will be little niche from the device. Okay, some device is there. So this it will be writing into one word. Is you know written into that from the device. Once it is copied from to the memory, one more data will come. So we have to say what is the start address. Okay, it could be the same address. And then where is the destination address, source and destination, okay. It may be a source, okay, address, source address and the destination address. So this is what we are providing to the DMA, okay. And then we are will say that what is the length of data from this source address, you copy into the destination address this much of length of data, maybe 10, you know, 100, 100 words. So what will happen is if suppose it is coming from uh, a device which is supposed to be giving packets of maybe a network device which is giving you 100 words at a time, it is supposed to give 100 words assuming that, then we can configure the DNA okay, say that you copy starting from this peripheral address to the start now you block some part of the memory and then make sure that it is not taken out, swapped out or it is not used up by some other process, so it is it should be free of any access, okay. It should be only accessible to the DMA, preferably as the regions and other things, you know, the right permission should be there, but it should not be overwritten by somebody other, some other process or some other peripheral. So you should lock it with this particular area of memory. Then we can tell DMA the ARM processor does it, inform the DMA programming the destination address and the start address and the length of the data to be copied. So if it has to be you know from where it has to be read and where it has to be written to. Once this is given the DMA starts off where without involving the process that means ARM free of this transfer once it is written, once it has passed on this information to the DMA, DMA takes care of transferring it. After the complete transfer is done it will interrupt. So then and the handler will come and then look at the data then inform the you know, process which is waiting for this data then it will take on to the processing. As I told you you know the any processing needs to be done by ARM that data has to be in the main memory. It cannot be in a, a disk you know or a peripheral or it could not it in a, you know it cannot be in peripheral registers and you can you know use it for processing it using ARM instruction. So before that it has to come to the memory and the Responsibility of copying the data from the peripheral to memory is given to the DMA. So once the DMA is programmed, whenever the A was free of any ever the transaction, the DMA also tries to, you know, uh, get the bus. So the arbitrator will be looking for all the masters. This is one master here, and this is another master, and ARM is another maybe third master. The three masters are there. They will be sharing the bus among themselves. And then once this is programmed, it will start off with the copying of the data as soon as the data is available. So it needs to be available and then it will come and then get programmed and copied. So this is what happens, this is what is done in a DMA. So I hope this is clear. So it could copy from peripheral to memory as I explained or it could do from memory to peripheral 